The goal of this problem is to solve for the effective link factors for columns AB and BC in the hypothetical frame shown below. If you haven't already watched it, check out my lecture on the basis of the effective link factors, link shown here, and check for links to additional videos in the comments section below. First, considering join A, we calculate the stiffness ratio as the sum of I over L for the columns that are framing into the joint, divided by the sum of I over L for the girders that are framing into the joint. There are two columns framing into the joint, one from above with a length of 12 feet and one from below with a length of 15 feet, both with a moment of inertia of 780 inches to the fourth. There are two beams framing into the joint, one from the left with a moment of inertia of 1440 inches to the fourth and a length of 20 feet, and one from the right with a moment of inertia of 2200 inches to the fourth and a length of 30 feet. The stiffness of the beam framing in from the right is reduced by a factor of one half, however, because the far end of the beam is pin connected to the adjacent column. The effective length method is covered in Appendix 7 of the 2022 edition of the AISC specification. The alignment charts that we're going to use to determine the effective length factors are found in the commentary to Appendix 7. If we read through that commentary, we can find that the case of the far end of a girder being pinned is addressed directly. Specifically, the commentary says that for sidesway uninhibited frames, if the far end of the girder is pinned, multiply EI over L for the girder by one half. Thus, the stiffness ratio for joint A is equal to 1.073. Next, there are two columns framing into joint B, both with a length of 15 feet and both with a moment of inertia of 780 inches to the fourth. There are also two beams framing into joint B, one from the left with a moment of inertia of 1440 inches to the fourth and a length of 20 feet, and one from the right with a moment of inertia of 2200 inches to the fourth and a length of 30 feet. The stiffness of the beam framing in from the left is not considered at all, however, because it is pin connected to the column under consideration. Also note that in this case, the full stiffness of the beam framing in from the right is included since its far end is rigidly connected to the adjacent column. The stiffness ratio for joint B is equal to 1.405. Finally, we consider the stiffness ratio for joint C, the fixed base of the column. In this case, we have one column framing into that joint, but there aren't any beams or girders framing into that joint. One way to think of this situation is to imagine the rotational restraint that is actually provided by the support as if it were provided by an infinitely stiff girder framing into the joint instead. Thus, if we take some positive number in the numerator representing the column stiffness divided by infinity in the denominator representing the support's rotational stiffness, we would end up with a theoretical stiffness ratio for joint C equal to zero. If we read through the commentary to AISC Appendix 7, though, we can find that the cases of pinned and fixed bases are addressed directly. Specifically, the commentary says that if the column end is rigidly attached to a properly designed footing, G may be taken as 1.0. Smaller values may be used if justified by analysis. In our case, we know only that the column base can be treated as fixed, so a special analysis isn't justified, and we'll just take G equal to 1.0 for joint C. Now that we know that GA and GB are 1.073 and 1.405 respectively, we can determine the effective length factor for column AB. First, I'll use the alignment chart by drawing a straight line from 1.073 on one side to 1.405 on the other. Then we can see that K is approximately equal to 1.4 based on where that line crosses the center axis. Alternatively, we can use the equation to calculate K, and in this case, find that K is equal to 1.410. Similarly, with G sub B and G sub C equal to 1.405 and 1.0 respectively, 
we can now determine the effective length factor for column BC. Using the alignment chart, by drawing a straight line from 1.405 on one side to 1.0 on the other side, we can see that K is equal to 1.3 or 1.4 based on where that line crosses the center axis. Alternatively, we can use the equation to calculate K and in this case find that K is equal to 1.398. In summary, we found that the effective length factors for columns AB and BC are 1.410 and 1.398 respectively for buckling in the plane of the frame shown. Thanks for watching.